pursuit. The defensive line, a little surge right there, and they let everybody kind of release. Three or four bodies that are now basically behind the play. And once he turned the corner, there were a couple good blocks. You can't see it right there. That really sprung him to the outside. And it was just a foot race down the sideline. Again, like I said, caught the Falcons off guard a little bit. So Pavol ready to kick off here. Nate, uh, Nate Hardwick is back deep to see the end of the touchdown there. Is diving effort there is for naught there by Kyle Vogt. Spread that secondary out a little bit, ran a couple receivers to the right side and then dumped it out to the left side. Short kick against the wind and this is taken close to the 28 yard line. That was Vogt number. Certainly knocked him down and knocked him toward the football, and that is what the official said. It was the contact was initiated because of the Falcons. First and 10, Lake Park from their own 32. Pfeiffer comes in motion here to the near side, and the give is to Manati, and Manati dives to the 44-yard line. Uh, first down here for Lake Park. 14-yard gain that time by Manati. Mike with 927 rushing yards coming into tonight's game. So a chance to get over the 1,000-yard mark. Actually, an 11-yard pickup by Manati. Him and Hotchstetter combined for 160 yards on the ground last week in that seven-point victory over Bartlett. First and 10, Lake Park, their own 43. Albin. Pass is complete to Hotch that breaks a tackle. Now Hardwick wrapping him up at the 44-yard line of Wheat North. It'll be another first down here for Lake Park. The Lancers continue to spread the field a little bit. See it again. Play action. Even fake the cameraman out there a little bit. Rolling out. There's two coming right across the field where he's supposed to be. Good hard second effort, third and fourth efforts there by Dave Hochstetter. First and 10, Lake Park from the 45, and again, it's Manati for a minimal game, minimal gain, a yard or two on the play. Wheat North defensively, Steve, allowing only 12 points per game, and they've already given up 14 here, two minutes into the second quarter. Well, then that's good, they're done. They've given up the quota, right? Last year, allowing uh, just about 21 points per game, so they certainly improved on the defensive side of the ball. Second down and nine here for Lake Park. Well, they played very well the second half of the season last year and rolled right into the playoffs to get to the semifinals against Naperville Central. Hotchstetter goes in motion. Albin looking uh -oh. and oh, incomplete. Oh. Ryan Sobolka, the intended receiver with a diving effort, and Ryan is uh, still down there. Now coming up. Yeah, he's not hurt. He's more disappointed in the fact that he had that football in his hands. We'll take another look at it. Setting up and just airing it out. One of those fly patterns here. Just see if you can run underneath this. And he's right there. He had it and just started to lose it as he came down. And there, of course, you see it bounding off his right hip after he hit the turf. Samolka, only a junior last year. He was the quarterback on the sophomore team. An outstanding basketball player as well. Yeah, he can play a little hoops. Third down and nine now for Joey Alvin and Lake Park. And they give us to Brad Neville. Whoa. Neville, oh my! Gets upended at the 40-yard line. Wow. Inter Sagan was there. I think that uh, yeah. he, he was the one who upended him. Yeah, he, Inter Sagan. <laughs> Take another look at it. A little cartwheel action. Yeah, here. a little misdirection. He tries to cut back. Intersagan goes right for the legs. That's what you're supposed to do with a big guy coming at you like that. Go low. He upended him and then some. So Ronnie Lindahl, the punted away here for Lake. Back to Rick Silius Field. Mark Kruger, Steve Mogan, Jeff Myers. Class 8A quarterfinal matchup between Lake Park and Wheaton North. Falcon crowd. Serving all of Chicago. Well, they're not cold, are they? No, no. <laughs> I was going to mention before that touchdown that Zach Ulrich made some decisions. He was 
considering Ball State and Air Force as well as Northern Illinois University. Hotstetter will pick it up at his own 20-yard line, and he'll return it 20 to the 26-yard line, a six-yard return. The Wheaton North Falcon is trying to decide whether he should be a Falcon or a Cardinal, and he ends up being a Husky. See that touchdown again. You see if you can see it. There's a head and shoulders right there. He's just across that goal line. And there's the ball. They just kind of had to unpile people there. I'm not sure the delay for the uh, signal, but uh, sometimes hard to find the guy with the ball in that pile of bodies. But, uh, Zach Ulrich is going to join uh, fellow uh, Falcon A.J. Harris exactly, running back last week. That's exactly what I was going to get to, Mark. A.J. Harris at NIU. Phil Horvath, quarterback from Naperville Central last year, is also up there for NIU. Joey Albin out of the shotgun, looking to his left here. The pass complete to Brad Neville uh, at the 35-yard line, about an eight-yard gain. Second and a couple here for the Lancers. Nice touch that time by Joey Albin. He was looking this way the entire play, basically, and just laid it out there in a spot for his receiver to go up and get it. Should mention Dan Passarelli also, uh, Naperville Central this year, running back wide receiver. He committed to, to NIU back in August, so Several area players, the, the Page Valley Conference players, will be suiting up for the Huskies next year. Second and a couple here for Joey Albin and Lake Park. This is Manati, and Manati will have a first down and more across the 45 and brought down across midfield to the 49-yard line of Wheaton North. A fine run that time by the 5'8 senior running back. Well, Manati made sure it was not going to be monotonous here tonight as yet another Lancer Gets his hands in the football, and they're really mixing things up. See a nice move cutting to the outside. Yeah, that's one thing they do, Steve, is double wing offense. Absolutely. They do a nice job of mixing things up. Lake Park averaging 29 points per game themselves, so two high-powered offenses. Again, Lake Park out of that double wing, and the give is to Manati once again as he gets to the 45, a gain of about three yards on the play. One well, other quick thing and note with Zach Ulrich, Mark. You know, he mentioned, yeah, you're going away to college, but you're still close to home being at NIU, and that was one of the things that helped him make the decision. Obviously, you go to Air Force out in Colorado, uh, beautiful mountains there, but you're a long ways from Wheaton. Second and six. The far side to Sabolka is complete as he's inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. It'll be enough for a Lake Park first down, and uh, they'll move the chains here as we come up on the two-minute mark of this first half. Yeah, pretty tough for family and friends to watch it play, and you're a 1,000 miles away. We'll take another look at that. Again, Sabolka throws it up there where only his man can pretty much get it. Good possession receiver, Sabolka. And Again, they move the chains. Pressed with Lake Park here so far. First and 10, Lancers out of the Upstate 8 Conference. Albin oh, to yeah. throw it, complete to Hotstetter. And Hotstetter will get wrapped up at the 32-yard line. Ryan Coop was there along with Sagan. Nice little sidearm throw that time by Albin. Rolling to his left and stops and kind of got that elbow in close to the body. And knew exactly where his receiver was going to be and knew he didn't have time to telegraph it out there. Just slung it. Second and five now for Lake Park from the 33-yard line. A minute 45 to go here. Hotstetter goes in motion and he'll get the call. He'll break a couple tackles, have a first down as he gets brought down at the 26. Nine-yard gain by Hotstetter. When this type of offense is run this sharply and executed the way the Lancers are doing, it's, it's tough to defend, Mark. It's as simple as that. You've got so many different variables and different people going every which direction. You don't know who has the football. Albin to the far side again to Sabolka, and he'll get hit immediately as soon as he caught the ball. About a three-yard pick up that time. Well, you've just got so many different things to look for defensively. Keeps you on your toes, to say the least. Tim Keo was there on the stop for Wheaton North. And uh, don't forget, you can uh, join Dave Wills and Perry Williams for area high school scores, highlights, and in-depth commentary on Sports Weekly. Thursday nights at 6.30 right here on the AT&T Broadband Network. 
Go to our website, attbroadbandnetwork.com, for more information and additional show times. That's Sports Weekly, Thursday nights at 6.30 with Dave Wills and Perry Williams. That timeout called by Lake Park, a minute 22 to go. They, they want to get in the end zone. And there you see some of the heaters on the sidelines. Both teams pretty much have them out here tonight. Need one of those up here in the press box here, my friend. It'll be second and four. Well, if you got a lot of feathers, you're not going to be cold, though. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the winner of this game will take on the Stevenson Patriots in the 8A semifinals next week. Lake Park wins it. They'll be at home. If we North wins tonight, they'll have to travel to Lincolnshire next week. Joey Albin, second down and four now for Lake Park. And the give is to Manati, and Manati gets to the 16-yard line, close to a first down for Lake Park. And a hurry-up offense here. Alvin just runs over the sideline, gets the play real quick, comes right back out. And basically just yells out some numbers to his teammates. Third and less than a yard to go here for Lake Park. Alvin will keep it himself as he tries to dive for a first down. Svengros was there on the stop for Wheat North, and it looks like he did pick up the first down, but just barely. Some of those little things, Mark, that are totally lost in the course of a game. You, the fans, normal fans aren't going to see. Alba ran inside, got the play, came back out. Obviously was told, hey, it's a yard. We need a first down. The quarterback sneak. And he looked over to his receivers on either side to kind of sell it that, hey, he was looking out to see where guys ran. And then he just took, took the football himself and the quarterback sneak. Pfeiffer and Sabolka, the two wideouts here for Lake Park. Alvin going to Sabolka in the right corner. And it is Kyle Volk was there. Yep. Picked it off, yes. Kyle Volk, a 6'3 junior. Almost had one earlier, but now he has come up with one. What a great grab by Kyle. He was playing safety valve back there deep. We'll take another look at you. See if you can see him in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. The pump fake, he didn't go for that at all. That's for the cornerback. He's standing back there waiting for the football, and great job. He knew where he was at, kept both feet in bounds. Great grab. But only 34 seconds remaining in the half, so uh, Wheat North first and 10 from their own 20. Well, the Lake Park Lancers striking early and often, jumped out to the early 14 to nothing lead, but then a nice long sustained drive by Wheat North with just over four minutes to go. Zach Ulrich, a two yard keeper, the extra point by Goodchild was good. And that is the all the scoring in this first half. Lake Park 14. Wheaton North 7, again, the winner of this game will move on.